Do you remember how this thing works? Oh, yeah, I gotta talk into it. You gotta push the buttons, like... Yeah. I hard, barely remember. It's like I'm holding a piece of alien technology that was recovered from a crashed spaceship. Yeah, called our basement. Yeah. Um, so, how are you doing? What's yeah, happening? I'm all right. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm all right. Um... We are partway through a long series of podcasts on the pandemic. Long ass series. Um, and we got very far derailed. Right? No, I'm kidding. Which is not... Not surprising for us, but still. This, this is actually a bit of a uh, large derailing even for us. Yeah. Like what, two, two months after? Three months? I don't even know, but... Well, probably only two months. A couple still. months, but uh, haven't finished a... Haven't had a recording session or produced another episode for a long time. And we were... We had sort of an arc in mind. We had a plan in mind. We did. And this is a, a break from that. Mm-hmm. Um... So, try again, like trying to figure out, do we just do we try to push through and continue with the plan when all evidence, available evidence, suggests that we won't be able to finish it? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Or do we just do like whatever we can, whenever we can? Well, I don't know. I mean, I um, I know you, you got to start the whole thing with a piece you'd written. I had a written piece too. I was hoping to finish with that. Or at least contribute my perspective at some point. So I'm kind of waiting for that. We'd still like to do that. But um, but I don't know. Um, well, why don't we just give a status update kind of thing now. Of? Of us, what's happening here, and the pandemic in general. Okay, we only have like 30 minutes, man. Yeah, we're out for a walk, and I've got limited memory space on this recorder. Unlimited time until I have to be back at my desk, but you know what? It'll force us to be um, concise. Yeah, that's I not keep happening. Saying that. That's not, ha- not going to happen. Okay. You're going to cut us off mid mid, mid sentence. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm watching the I'm watching the time. Okay. We have almost forty minutes. All right. Um. Where do you so where do you see things relative to where they were when we last spoke mm-hmm. on the, the, as far as the progress of the pandemic and the response to it? Okay, the pandemic is proceeding at pace, um, and I don't see that nothing's changed in my prognosis or what I've seen, um, or what part me what I expected from or with the pandemic. Um, our response is deteriorating. How, just, how so? Oh, it's just dissolving it to, oh, oh well, people die. Life goes on. So, my my understanding is that... Kids okay, die. Happen. Well, so we've... we've um, we just approved vaccines for younger kids. People can start scheduling their their younger children to get vaccinated. Um, And, of course, vaccines for adults have been available for a while now, and now we have boosters available. For some. And, um, well, for Americans who... who It's recommended for some, but I think anybody who wants a booster can go get one. Probably. Um, So my sort of interpretation of all this is that the vaccines are helping in the sense that the r- individual risk to vaccinated people and their risk of severe outcomes or death from infection is reduced. It has been that overall picture, like if you took like a collective risk number, mm-hmm. that has been pretty dramatically reduced in the vaccinated. Except for one thing. If you were at high risk to begin with, you are still at high risk within that group. 
the people who are sick and dying that are vaccinated are the same people who would be sick and dying from the disease. So overall risk is reduced, but the people at highest risk are still at highest risk amongst the group of vaccinated people. So what accounts for that? Um, that, that they don't, even with vaccination, they don't mount a good immune response or, um, or what? I think it's reasonable to conclude that um, for people at higher risk, I, I think it's reasonable to conclude that of all the people of highest risk who were vaccinated, fewer of them have been hospitalized and died. Yes. I think that's a reasonable conclusion. I think the numbers bear that out. Okay. But relative to the, to the whole group, relative to the whole group, they're still at highest risk, and um, we can have a conversation about how much their risk has, their risk has been reduced. Okay. It, so what you're saying is probably it's been reduced some, but if you look at the cohort of vaccinated individuals... As a group. The people who were high risk are remain still, at elevated at risk. risk, so there's still like a curve. Right. Okay. So it hasn't like flattened everyone's risk. No, no, no. Equally. And it's very dangerous to think that it has. Yeah. And then, of course, we've long been pointing out that the uh, the risk for children. Always very small. And the risk for people who either can't get vaxxed for um, technical reasons involving their cancer treatment or autoimmune disorders or oh, whatnot. What have you, right. Um, is remains high. Yep. So maybe we push down the risk. And in fact, higher, and in fact, higher for children than we've seen in the past, while still With remaining Delta. small. Yes. Yeah. While still remaining small, it is higher than it was. Right. And Three children die a day since September. Right. In the United States. And, from COVID. And people basically are treating this as over. Or because as a success. Because of the vaccines. As a success. But yet the caseloads now, Are what did you times. say, three times? Um, that was my last, last notation. and that time was, you researched it? Right. And um, I haven't looked at that specific number in about two weeks, so it's probably higher. But it's three times what it was last year at, um, at the end of October. Yeah. And uh, that's like twice as high. Michigan was... Um, I was just a little bit... Um, not stunned, but a little bit startled. startled to see how high the death rate and the case rate still oh, it's are a, it's in Michigan. The CDC itself considers the, the state of Michigan to be high risk. Right. To be at high risk transmission. They are now back up there. Mm -hmm. Now, like, yeah, we see these declines that happen, like, day to day. Over, typically, we see a decline over given week by week but then we keep seeing these these like um resets these these uh um regressions these and you like know big regressions honestly. yeah these surges happening right. again and the, the biggest ones are mostly people denying it but they're mostly connected to schools yep. to school reopening school reopening and because there have let's been... just back up to a really small piece of information about human virology. Right. Um, most human viruses reside in three to seven year olds, almost all of them. In the population, in the population. of right. It's just constantly of children. Of it's, it's the natural reservoir for most human yeah. viruses. Right. So when you send them back to school to intermix, then they bring it back out to the rest of the population. Yeah. All the people they're connected to, and they're parents, also relatives, etc. And it's almost impossible. To ask young children, just you know, please uh, mask up and wash your hands and, and social distance. <laughs> I mean, don't, I don't know. Have you met a three-year-old? Don't lick any doorknobs. Don't lick your friends either. Okay. You can, you can lick your nose, and you can lick your friends, but you don't lick your friends', friends noses. Nope. And yeah. kids do just that kind of disgusting thing. Just that kind thing. of disgusting thing. Lick you know, doorknobs or pick up things off the floor or touch grab things random, and grab all kinds things. Of stuff. Lick it, taste it, chew it. And that can't just be like. And we've got to understand that's actually normal toddler. It's absolutely baby. normal. And you can't just. Well, the parents should simply instruct the children instruct not the to children. do that. And enforce those rules. <laughs> okay. So 
there are hundreds. Last I looked, it was four or five hundred outbreaks at Michigan schools. Yep. And again, the numbers keep sort of declining and then surging, declining and then surging. Yep. Um, we suspect that there will again be big surges over the holidays. Thank and because so many years. people have basically put all their faith in the vaccines and given up on any other protective measures at all any other protective measures that we i am suspecting that the like post thanksgiving and post christmas death surges are going to be terrible are going to be much worse than last year so it's not it's november People don't really know this. It's like a. It's not being reported. It's, it's like a being, state secret. Right. But more people died of the of COVID in 2021 than in all of 2020 when there were these you know huge spikes huge and like spikes. Right. New York City went on red alert and the sirens every day. Sirens round the clock. Yeah. People dying in their homes. homes unattended. Yeah, and and um, and it's far worse now. But we're all partying like it's 1999. So I want to talk a little bit about workplaces without getting into too much specifics of my workplaces. But yeah. I think that most workplaces in Michigan um, lifted their mandates. Yeah! Some no of vax? Fuck that! Some of them a few months after the CDC... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Guidelines changed. Yeah. Some of them probably sooner. Some of them immediately. Some of them immediately, guidelines. and basically people stopped masking and distancing and started ha hanging out as normal. And um, I know that in my workplace, ninety percent of everyone is not masking, and mm -hmm. they're traveling. And they're getting together uh, socially. for socially for work activities. Mm -hmm. um, and like my office had a in-person meet and greet with some like some big wigs, some big wigs. Uh, and my team had a team building dinner at a restaurant out of state, which I've not attended any of these things my right. te my new team in california got together for i think they were Red doing boys. bowling <laughs> yeah. uh every yeah you know, these so um oh, bowling I, and dinner out so i mean this yeah. is like everywhere we look people are like oh i got vaccinated so well, well and also the people when you tell them about people dying that vaccinated people are dying children are dying like, oh, that's so sad. Thank goodness everyone's vaxxed. Right. And when when liberals, in my experience, when they hear about someone very sick from COVID or dying from COVID... First shit they want to ask, are they vaccinated? They immediately jump to... See, that's why they're sick. The explanation that, well, all those... They were stupid. They deserve it. They didn't get vaxxed. Um, we don't know that. And in many cases now, it's not true. It's not true. Um, but we, and we don't know that. Because Nor do we have a right to know. Sure. I'm not um, trying to dig into any HIPAA-protected patient nope. information. Thank you. No. Um, but this is... Uh, it's, it's not good, it's not you know? Good. It's not good. <laughs> and what? Because the narrative is, well, there's a vaccine. If people want to die, that's up to them. And, and the fact is, this the is, thing that I didn't mention like a few minutes ago... The PMC personal responsibility mantra, you know? But no, the thing I didn't mention a few minutes ago is that collectively, um, NPIs are more effective than the vac current vaccine is. The current vaccine avail vaccines are available in the U.S. are less effective than NPIs taken collectively. NPIs, if you haven't been following the, our series all along, are non-pharmaceutical interventions... And they range from slightly challenging to slightly to extremely easy. They include hand washing, hand washing, right. masking, distancing, distancing, not gathering groups, meeting outside, etc. Uh, ventilation, 
Right. It's on. Right. Interventions of any type that don't involve a pharmaceutical product. Yeah. And this is how vaccine. This is how viruses. This is really how viruses are traditionally defeated right. in concert with vaccines, right. which are a valuable tool. But not the solution. But people don't yeah. get that the, the vaccine, as you've said, that this vaccine, that the, all of these vaccines for, for COVID are not terminating. Yeah, they don't terminate the disease in the... In, in the way that... Say smallpox. Uh, in the way that many of the other traditional vaccines that well, we're accustomed to are. The vaccines that we think of as being um, miracles, 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 absolute miracles, absolute miracles, like, say, polio or smallpox, for example, right. or um, diphtheria, for example. Right. And those, um, and diphtheria is absolutely deadly to children under five. Right. A lot of times you see families, they lost many children historically. You'll see a cemetery, and they've got five children buried together all under five. Yeah. It was diphtheria. They all went down together. They all went down together. And it was, or a whole community lost everyone under five yeah. in one winter. Yeah. Because of diphtheria. Um, right. We have, an, we have an extremely effective vaccine. It terminates the virus. And actually, at this point, it's probably not circulating in the United States. Yeah. But that said, um, we don't know that it's not circulating. And I wouldn't skip a diphtheria vaccine. No. For, for my children. I, but, I, I wouldn't either. Um, because it actually is absolutely deadly to children under five. Now, mind you, before we had a vaccine, communities that embraced what we now describe as NPIs had much be- fared much better. They saved a lot of five-year-olds doing that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of five and unders. So, um, this is... I don't. I don't the, yeah, the the parts about this that worry me so much are the um, the tribal attitudes. Yeah, it's absolutely dangerous. I mean, Be, it's, it's deadly. Because utterly deadly. You can't. You know, if someone's because you can't have a rational fucking conversation. If someone is just uninformed or just confused. Oh, yeah. You may be able to inform or sway that person. Inform them or disambiguate. You know? But if their identity is wrapped up in their faith in... And really, if their faith and identity is on the line, they're ready to fight. And you're not going to make gonna any win. progress. You're not going to win. And almost always when you're debating or arguing or insulting or whatever you're doing, whatever you're, doing. you're just hardening their opinions. Mm-hmm. And reinforcing their desire to make you even f- further part of their outgroup. And right. the... So... I'm not really into both siderism when it comes to Except the I, parties, but, yeah. let me, but let me finish. The, okay, go ahead. But... The the right, the conservative, the Republican Party, has really embraced um, pushing these like conspiracy narratives to 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 energize their base, which is what they do. That's how they do it. Right, and they they really have leaned into that. Yeah. And along with things like you know. Other conspiracy theories like Trump lost the election. Yeah. You know, where, well, that's not the conspiracy. The conspiracy is that, you know, um, it was stolen from him. Well, right. But, oh, right, exactly. Yeah, the the, 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 the theory stolen. is that he won the election, but. That was stolen from him. But it was stolen from him, right. And that is still, like, still on the, on the right wing media. That's still pushed every day. Still talking about it, still. And. Still deep in it. Okay, so that's the you know conservative side allegedly. Yeah. And then the alleged, alleged uh, liberal side. On the liberal side, you've got all these sort of PMC people, professional, I mean professional managerial class mm-hmm. people, including team science. including team science. team science and people who I identify as liberals and Democrats, yep. um, not leftists. Who are and many who are in the professions of epidemiology and and 
I'd be fucking ashamed. And um, health in one form or another, yeah. who yeah, are basically promoting this idea that the pandemic is done, is over. We need to accept that this illness is now endemic and we have to stop um, trying, to avoid trying to drag down our economy. Yeah, that's just um, childish and selfish. Right, so protecting our... And when I'm saying, like, no, I don't want to attend this in-person event. I don't want to meet all these guests from out of town. I don't want to fly to California on an airplane. Thanks. Um, I don't want to get in the cars with people or planes with people. Thanks. Um, who, are un, who are not taking precautions. Of any kind to speak of. Of any kind. And will actually get in your face if they're irritated by your precautions. Yeah, come at um, Then I'm, you know, unreasonable. Then I, you know, to, I'm doing this to protect mostly, specifically, our daughter. Yep. Who's at definitely elevated risk. The, yeah, a child at elevated risk. Right. Who can't, even with the uh, revised gu- guidelines, can't get vaccinated yet. And who the vaccine is unlikely, is less likely to fully protect. Right. Right. But that's everyone. That's a lot of people. You've got to assume that... That's everyone. A lot of people... Have someone at home they need to keep safe. Yeah. Or when they're, you know, they'll, if they get a breakthrough, they'll wind up with long COVID or whatever. Or some awful shit. Right. Be or unable to... Or they're healthy and vital young children um, may end up with MISC. Right. So, there's so much... I mean, MSI. Multi-system inflammatory. System. Yeah. There's so many reasons not to throw in the towel and say, you know what, it's just endemic now. If you're wearing a mask now, you're a, you're an idiot. You're in the Stone Age. You're not following... You're What's not, wrong with you? What they really say is you're, you're not, not following, following the, the science. science. We don't need masks. Be- and the reason no one trusts... CDC is and because... And this is why no one trusts the CDC. It's because the six-foot number was pulled out of someone's ass at the direction of the, the administration. Right. The uh, well, lifting they, of the mandates was pulled out of someone's, someone's ass at the direction of the administration. It did not... It follow, They were following a script. They were following a fantasy about the actual vac- results of the vaccine right. in the population, not, not what was really Some happening. Some fantasy script that didn't include huge swaths of data. Right. Now, here's the other piece, right? And they stop collecting data. They stop collecting data, right? So, the other piece of that is, when Team Science goes on about the science and tells us to get vaxxed and don't worry about anything else, they lose their credibility. Right. And then they end up, why don't people trust the science? Because you lost all your credibility. Right. Why people don't trust the science? So, I follow a whole cadre of epidemiologists on Twitter, and um, there are some there who are great and say, you know what, we still need to need embrace the precautionary principle. We need... Because we don't know yet. We need air filtration. We need, you know, we need to follow Curiously, these basic... we can't get any studies on air filtration. Not a single fucking one. So why don't you take a couple minutes and talk about this air, air filtration thing you are often talking about with me? Oh, so the Corsi Rosenthal air filter. Um, 100 bucks. And basically, it's four air filters from Home Depot, a box fan, some, piece duct, of ca- tape. some duct tape, a piece of cardboard. You duct tape it together into a cube and um, run it when you have people inside. Now, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was advocating that people wear masks before we knew anything. Right. And people, um, a lot of people came to shout me down. Right. A lot of people came to shout me down. Team Science came to shout me down. Well, Fauci gave people the opposite advice. What he really was doing was trying to keep there from being a run on N95. Right? Didn't work. But he didn't say that. So didn't he say was that. lying. He was lying. And really, it would have been okay to say, listen, Americans, we need you to step up. Make your own mask and leave the N95 to the professionals. We can do this together. That could have been very easy. Yeah. But instead, he cost us when I mean us, I mean actual epidemiologists. Oh, yeah. Vital, vital credibility. Yes. 
it was just lost. He has a long career of doing this kind of and flying, by once the way. it's gone, you can't buy it back. There's no buying it back. It's really more of a political creature than a science creature. That said, so, and the reason I was advocating folks to just mask up, I was, actually it was late February, beginning of March, I was telling folks on Instagram and other places, mask up, I'm wearing a mask in public going forward. And um, I was saying that because it just makes sense. I don't have any, I did, at the time I had zero data except for what we knew about SARS. I had zero information to suggest that this was XYZ effective. All I knew was that there's a viral disease circulating. Viral vector. With a viral vector, a respiratory took, vector. It took six months before they even acknowledged it was there an airborne virus. Uh, precisely. But don't, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Sorry. But the, um, if there's an, um, a respiratory viral disease circulating, a mask largely will only help you and cannot harm you. Right. Okay. So based on that sort of conjecture of my own, I advocated mask wearing. A lot of team science came for me. Now, we have no data they've to speak They've of. since come back and apologized, of course, for we, being premature. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but um, now, we have no data to speak of. We have no efficacy rates to speak of. Nothing. On what? The Corsi Rosenthal air filter. On the air filtration. Yes. But we know it does a lot of air exchanges. We know it catches particles smaller than... The COVID-19 COVID. virus. Based on that conjecture, that information alone, I don't think you should be indoors with anyone without a Corsi Rosenthal air filter. All I right. think it's a bad call. I think if you're going to gather with people anyone indoors... Else outside your pod or what? Yeah, if you're going to gather with people indoors, from outside your pod, build one and use one. I think it helps. I have no evidence to that effect. And if you don't want to meet with people outside your pod indoors, don't because I have no evidence that this will protect you. Right. But, um, right. but if you want to, you want to meet with people, please, please, for the can, sake of can, my child, don't can, pass it on to her and use this air filter. Consider this. Consider really? doing this. And honestly, even if, if you don't you give a shit about yourself, you don't you give a shit. If you insist on meeting indoors insist on meeting people indoors, outside your park. You don't care about yourself. Please, do it for disabled children. Do it for disabled children under five whom we have no idea when their vax is coming. Right? So, Team Science, listen up. Talking to you. Please, do what you can to keep children safe. It's the responsible and moral thing to do. And, again, the vaccine is only a part of that picture. Only part of that picture. Yeah. So mask up. Maybe don't meet inside. Etc. I know it's cold. I'm sorry. Put a coat on. Well, we're actually out walking and we're sweating on a November day because it's... <sighs> You know, climate change has its uh, effects. So, this is something that, like you, you keep saying, there's no testing. Well, no. why? There's no, it's because there's, there's not no a financial benefit. incentive to test these low cost interventions. And, like, the, uh, there's no product to sell. You, there's things you can make out of cheap and widely available products. Right. But there's no product to sell on the market yet. That there's, So there's no one And there's no making, gatekeeped product. Yeah, there's no regulatory agency right. um, for this kind of thing. Um, for like ad hoc home air filters. Um, and people were, the CDC was actually talking about air exchanges in schools and you know all that but there was let's not pretend there was ever any money behind that nope so most schools have any evidence to conclude its eff efficacy most schools haven't done jack shit when it comes to improving their their air quality, air quality. they're washing the desks they're still worried about Which, you yeah. know again there's not there's not no reason for that but it's not a covid precaution um, it, it maybe is helping with influenza. Probably. Um, but uh, we've concluded that um, casual surface transmission is Not so fair. rare as to be Not almost fair. negligible right. with COVID-19. It's not impossible, but right. it's really rare. And specifically, 
this this speaks to the airborne versus not thing. Right. And we were stuck on there being fomites, which are particles fomites, yeah. that survive on surfaces. We were measuring how long they lasted and all of a sudden Yeah, happens. yeah, how when, long it lasts on copper versus plastic versus, versus paper versus Right. You know. Which is incidentally the, the traditional historical reason brass not doorknobs are a sign of wealth. Wealthy people always use brass to protect them from disease. Because the uh, a lot of these particles don't... die out quickly on, they, brass. on metal surfaces. Not metal, brass. Huh, interesting. Yes, but that said, um, how shall I say? They... There's no money in it. Whereas, meanwhile, a lot was politically and financially at stake for discrediting um, any use of uh, that thing that uh, 45 was talking about. Oh, the, the, the Z pack and zinc vitamin D combo. Yeah. Um, we had a study on that in a matter of weeks. After it was, became a topic of political discussion, right. weeks later we had an asshole rubbing up his engine. Okay. But um, within weeks we had a study debunking, um, how shall I say, the null set of that theory. Yeah. And, um, and now every time anyone talks about it or mentions it or goes back to it or refers back to it, I see Team Science posting that study, one study, and uh, which came out quickly. One study. Yes. So, but it was the null set. It didn't actually talk about the specifics about how this was used to treat things. They tested on people on ventilators, and right. the whole idea is that you use it before you go to the hospital. Right. So there's actually been no study of that. Right. But there was immediately a study done to discredit it as a possible treatment of any kind. Right. Well, we're still, you know... Grace and I are still taking vitamin C and vitamin D and, and zinc lozenges. Oh, and I, I, did, oh, I do the whole anti-vaxxer thing. I, I uh, rinse, uh, I have a nasal rinse with iodine. Yeah, I but we do that after, after, a, after likely exposure. a likely exposure. Right. Yeah, so... So, you know... This is not... I, and these are low effort. Low effort. Low cost. Low harm, low cost. Uh, low harm interventions that might nip an infection in the bud. Yeah, so... And the thing is, they're not only relevant to COVID. They're relevant to all kinds of viral. respiratory and viral infections. Yeah. So, again, not going to tell you what to do. We can't cite a specific study that says taking four grams of vitamin C a day will save you from... COVID. COVID, but... Because there is no such study. But, uh, you know... And I wouldn't... So, and also... I wouldn't suggest that if you are COVID cautious, that you should now throw caution to the wind and use these measures to protect yourself. I and don't have evidence. And not mask. And not mask. Not, or not whatever. Not distance. Or just like, go ahead, go out to your bowling nights and bars and movies and whatnot. Right, don't and, worry about it. You got, and, you got vitamin C. Don't worry and about it. And just use vitamin C. Any more than we'd say you should just, hey, don't worry about any of that. Just take ivermectin prophylactically. Which is not. Prophylactically. Which is not anything that I'm trying to say. Right. I'm just saying that I personally use that and it's helped support my immune health for decades. It's fine. That's all I'm getting at. Yes. Um, that said, um, if you are going to go out and you are going to circulate, please consider these methods because, you know, you're not doing the basic things that we have evidence prevents transmission. Right. Oh, and that's the last piece about team science here. The thing that team science is conveniently shifting the dialogue away from is they're shifting the conversation to, well, what's the number of hospitalizations how many deaths? That's the conversation they want to have. Right. The conversation they need to have is how many transmissions. Uh -huh. Because every transmission is an opportunity for a variant. For a mutation. Every single one. And so our goal needs to be reduced transmissions almost at all costs. Because we can be back at square one right. with one mutation. Right. And... Um we're tracking, we're following news about, I, I'm following news personally yep. about two post-Delta variants. Yeah, variants. Delta sub-variants, whatever, right. that are... That may evade vaccines altogether. They look quite dangerous. They're not here yet. There's nope. no... We don't reckon of them. Yet. Don't run around and panic about these variants yeah, no, yet. Honestly, you don't need to panic about any of this. But um, they are concerning, and this is just more data points to tell me that, you know what, the people who are back to normal now, they're... Psychopaths. <laughs> go on, sorry. They're, fo they're following bad advice because it 
Because the bad advice benefits the people in power. It benefits people in power, and it allows them to do pretty much what they, they want to do, would what like to do, to do which is do pretend that, you know, things are all better. We're talking about another point I want to make is the, it's kind of an aphorism almost, but like, mm -hmm. given how global we are, yep, this is not over here until it's, it's over, over everywhere. everywhere. And our official death count is under a million, unofficial, probably twice well, that. Yeah, probably but, two million. Um, globally, again, probably poorly tracked in many countries. Mm -hmm. We're uh, last figure I saw was six million. Yep. And this risk doesn't really go away in a local place when people are flying in and out of the country mm -hmm. all the time. All the damn time. It doesn't. Right. So, anyway, we have a few minutes left. Sure. Any other... So, this is like an update rant. Yeah. Whatever you can do, please try to reduce transmissions. In your own personal life, reduce transmission as much as you can. And if that means your local theater goes out of business because... They... I'm sorry. <laughs> There's probably a way to adapt keep them alive yeah. it doesn't involve encouraging transmissions right but i can't actually speak to every specific right situation or locality right but you can so, you can brainstorm a way to keep them in business right so you know i i'm really frustrated and sad that i didn't go see dune in the theater because if ever movies wanted like needed to be seen on a big screen oh that was one like lawrence of arabia in 70 millimeter yeah. and villeneuve's dune yeah. <laughs> right Yep. Uh, big wide screen. Um, right. And I didn't get to do that. And I won't do that. And like, well, don't you want to keep theaters alive? Sure. Yeah, I do. Scra stage a private screening for me. There you go. I'll pay. <laughs> An empty theater. I'll pay. <laughs> I won't pay. <laughs> oh, you won't pay. Very, on, very man. expensive. All right. But um, you get what I'm saying. It's like, I can't personally put everyone around me at risk. To keep a theater to, open. to do, yeah. Like, the restaurants that adapted, we're still supporting as best we can with, with curbside takeout. And frankly, take -out. our personal fave had a huge indoor seating space. Yes. At no point in the last two years have they used that seating space more than 25%. Right. And so the, when the restrictions were lifted and so on, they seated 25% 25 capacity. And they've been following the local data. The local data. And when there's surges, they close the dining room. Right. And so they are doing a booming business. Yep. They're still open. They're still doing open. a biz booming business in curbside takeout. Yes. You drive up. Catering, drive up. Get, you, yeah, they up. give you a big <clears throat> box of takeout containers. I hate to be throwing away that many takeout containers, but, you know. But, yeah, we're trying to keep them in business, so. Yeah. So... So that's, we've, we've been going, we've been, we, we had sushi for our anniversary dinner. Yep. Takeout, like, Take out. Uh, picked up outside the restaurant. Yep. Um, I'd love to be eating out, eating in restaurants again. I'm not doing it. It's one of my favorite things. I'm not doing it. It's been a, lo it's been it's been a long time. Almost two years. Mm hmm And... Not doing it. I love movie theaters. I love movies. I'm not. We're watching them at home. Yeah. Um, I don't love flying, but you know, I'd be more willing to fly to California or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, we're attending a funeral. Virtually. Coming up via via Zoom. Yeah. And that's not. Again, I would love to purpose. have gone to see my <clears throat> relatives to be there in, in person. person. But we're not ready. We're not, we don't feel safe. And it's not, when we say we, we don't mean us. We mean the United States is not ready. Right. Right. Okay, I think we're going to wind up this little conversation. I'm going to see if I can get this one out as like a, an interlude or something. Right. And do what we can to Soldier continue on. with this it. series. And then i got to get back to my... Desk. Wake up, it's time to make money. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.